Hello, today on episode 14 of December, I will show you some interesting aspects about one of the most underrated and perhaps the least known DOS shell that was available. One that was supplied by Microsoft but was well hidden in most uh, versions. First of all, I think that DOS shell is a very interesting program and I would like to present to you more about why it is uh, so special, despite in some ways not being as well thought of as other applications. The first and the most important aspect is the fact that DOS shell is not quite a new program. Uh, of course, we are talking about uh, the legacy. Although uh, the copyright mentioned mentions uh, 1993, I think that the first one, uh, the first version was developed around two or three years ago, and it has a very interesting story because what ended up as uh, the DOS shell was actually a much more powerful um, encompassing suit that could have probably been sold by Microsoft. But since uh, there was a bit of a conflict between um, the perspective offered by DOS and the perspective offered by Windows, MS-DOS shell was thought of as uh, an intermediate uh, solution. But it was a very interesting intermediate solution and I will show to you exactly why. If you look on the upper part, you're going to notice the typical organization of uh, a program um, having menus, drop-down menus, that could be worked with either using the, um, the mouse or the keyboard. You will, you will see the directory tree, you will see the files on the right panel, and you could, all, of course, uh, sort them in various ways. However, the most important part is in the second part of the screen. You can see a list of uh, applications that could be run and an active task list. Keep that in mind, an active test leak. Why would you need that? Well, because the Microsoft DOS shell is actually a task switcher. And think about it, task switchers were very few and far in between. There were solutions um, like, um, I think, uh, Desk View and others that were able to switch DOS applications. While um, all of these solutions did not make it possible to have applications running simultaneously, which of course would have been very useful for DOS environment that offers only the ability to run a single application. With um, a simple MS-DOS shell, you could run multiple applications and you would just switch from one to another as needed. Mm, I think using um, Alt-Tab, you would uh, get from one application to another. And of course, when you will end up doing what uh, you have to do, you will get back to MS-DOS shell or to another application depending on your requirements. And thinking about this feature is actually fantastic in a sense, because everything that DOS shell could do was available in not a very large program. Of course, it generates uh, some files and it's not particularly fast when um, it does the task switching but everything about it is actually available in a program that could be used potentially not only with Microsoft MS-DOS, but also with uh, other uh, programs, other operating systems such as uh, Digital Research DOS, and uh, even today we can talk about FreeDOS. So think about this aspect, a simple application that had much more features than you could uh, ask for, and this was precisely one of the most important reasons. Why Microsoft developed it? I think that it has something to do with uh, Microsoft being interested to release a multitasking DOS. And since uh, using a multitasking DOS was not uh, particularly interesting to Microsoft when it was clear that Windows was making a lot of uh, sales, Microsoft did not want to uh, set aside too much resources and create a competition for uh, Windows. And DOS was relegated to the legacy and Windows was uh, the future. This meant that all the work that Microsoft put into releasing a multitasking DOS was uh, set aside. And one of such projects, I think, was what came after to be known as the Microsoft uh, MS-DOS shells. 
So I think this is very important. What kind of features MS-DOS shell offers? Well, your typical choice of uh, file operations, uh, but you can notice right away that it's not as complex as some other file managers because ultimately MS-DOS shell was not um, created with uh, file functionality in the forefront. It was more as a way to launch applications based upon your uh, requirements. And I will exemplify immediately uh, this capability by going into a directory that I know very well and then choose a file. And I think that we will see a text file just over here. I'm entering another application, so I will be very brief when doing so. This has launched the application, the MS-DOS editor, and entered editing of this uh, file. And if we are going to exit, we are getting back to the typical MS-DOS shell window. Uh, because of this jumping, I'm not, I will not show you too much the ability to run these applications, but think about the functionality. If you watch closely, you will notice, just a moment, Okay, I think this one is perfect. So, that you have something like file associations. And if I'm going for a text file, you can see right away that there is an, associate, an associated program that would launch the moment I am entering a file that is presented on the window. So this means that you can do a lot of um, automation in your activity. And this is perhaps one of the features that MS-DOS shell does so well. And of course, uh, you can do much more than that, and I will show you the potential of MS-DOS shell, although I'm not aware of any other application that was created for this program. So if I am going to enter the viewer, I think F9, let's see. Yes you will enter a file viewer. This application goes on to show the potential of uh, MS-DOS shell in the sense that you could have applications using a, graphics, a graphical environment, but there were none being released. And all of these aspects that pertain to the mystery surrounding MS-DOS shell and what it could have been actually goes on to show that uh, the MS-DOS shell was a very interesting program and one that is, of course, available uh, right out of the box for many DOS versions, yet very few use users were aware, used or understood why MS-DOS shell was so important. And, of course, you can get into the uh, hex file viewer. So, I think that for these reasons alone, you have to see MS-DOS shell running and you have to have a computer where you could experience this because I think it's it's very telling what could have been done with enough resources if uh, developers were um, left to do their own ideas and uh, made uh, them fruitful. Of course, you, you may think why we, we would need that, but I think that for MS-DOS it was uh, fantastic in a sense because compatibility was very good and most video cars could be able to, to enter such a graphical mode, the VGA mode, with very little uh, issues. On the other side, running Windows was a much more demanding system. I don't know exactly how much memory DOS shell uses, but uh, I have a guess that it's not as much, it's clearly much lower than uh, a typical Windows uh, installation would do. And it would offer, however, the same um, task switching uh, capability at much lower resources. So think about it. MS-DOS shell is an unfinished product. If more applications would have been made for MS-DOS shell, um, a functionality that is not very far from Windows could have been made available and in a graphical environment that would have been much better refined than you would find in a typical DOS application. And I think that it's um, a fantastic situation because you have to think about another issue. 
even other developers um, like um, Symantec that uh, focused on releasing not on desktop and other um, developers that released uh, all sorts of uh, those shells were not able to use the same graphical environment and have the same capability out of the box in an ms DOS shell. And I think this goes on to show that the market could have been much larger and could have been much more complex. However, the thing that changed forever history was Windows because Windows became very popular. But this is what makes me think that and the DOS system never actually got um, a well-polished enough release that could make you see all its capability and everything that could be uh, could be done in uh, such an environment. And I think that this is a, s a sad state of affairs. But however, uh, this is what uh, we are having. So I'm going to show some other details about uh, running the program that you may find interesting. Unfortunately, since it's not so complex, I will not be able to, to show you a functionality that is similar to what you have seen in DOS Navigator or Norton Commander or uh, Volko Commander, but what matters is what's left on the table. And I hope that someday, if, um, and perhaps if is not the right word, when uh, MS-DOS will be released as open source code, um, perhaps we would have the chance of understanding better what MS-DOS shell was and in what way it could have been um, improved. And hopefully there would be a product that would address all this, um, all this functionality and could be implemented in other uh, DOS versions such as uh, FreeDOS and actually solve a lot of problems related to the way in which we interact with uh, DOS today. But of course, these are only uh, expectations and hopes. What matters the most is that DOS shell is here and it actually shows a lot more things than you would uh, think at first. Even if ultimately it's still somewhat of a mix between a graphical and a text uh, user interface. But I think it's one that had a lot of potential and uh, I uh, hope that someday this will uh, uh, come to fruit. However, for the moment, I think that we are left with a uh, fantastic software that you have, you must see. However, one that probably is only something that is left as a thought exercise. But if you have the right applications that could be used because sometimes uh, there are graphical applications that, I, as far as I can tell, may not be entirely compatible either with the task switcher or with uh, the rest of the functionality of MS DOS shell. Most um, text file, uh, text uh, interface, um, text mode applications could be done, could be used. So in the left side, you have some ideas about that. It's um, organized in a way that is not very far from what you would see on other DOS shells. So there are some sort of uh, basic groups that would mm, mimic in some ways the concepts used by uh, by Windows, but the rest is left in a very simple state. So you see part of what could have been uh, done in this uh, way. And if you're going to properties, you, you see other uh, choices that are interesting. So um, unfortunately, there, are, there is also another uh, bad aspect that uh, I have not shown to you and that occurs immediately after starting uh, DOS shell. Due to the way in which the application is being created, it has to read all the directory tree when starting. And this is the default mode, which means that unfortunately, it may take a couple of uh, seconds, if not uh, a whole minute or even more, in order to uh, create a file listing of all the files and uh, and directories so that you could start to work with the application. I'm not entirely sure if there would be a way to change the current um, display mode to, to avoid that, but as far as I can tell, there are no easy solutions for that. 
And perhaps this is one of the reasons why many users did not have the patience to, to work with MS-DOS shell. And since they did not run Smart Drive or any other uh, file caching um, program, it would mean that it would take way too much in order to uh, do so. Even if the directory tree was read only once when the application starts and then everything would be kept uh, no matter how many applications you would start and stop or uh, how many tasks you switch. But unfortunately, this long delay when starting the application may not have been entirely to the liking of uh, some users. And one of the major reasons those shell was uh, shelved. And of course, the interface that is not particularly um, attractive or at least not as attractive as um, solutions offered by other developers. But I think that MS-DOS shell is an application that you have to run in order to understand what could have been done. And I am very glad that I found MS-DOS shell more than 20 years ago because it really changed the way in which um, I can think about what those capabilities are. So if you enjoyed the video, I am very glad. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, this more or less concludes the December of 2022. So if you like the video, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.